15 years ago. Can <laughs> Mary like be that yesterday. old? No way. Oh, I hope she's not watching. <laughs> and then Mills hit seven against Denison a year ago in November. So we're back and we're playing basketball here in the third quarter. And this is a young lady, Arnott, who uh, did a lot in that opening half. Gets that shot blocked, and here comes Margaret Terry and Sarah Mitchell for the Spartans. Spartans had 35 points, and most of them came from outside the arc. That is only the third basket inside the three-point arc of the game for the Spartans. That's Sarah Mitchell with her opening two. Brooks inside against Mills, and Jessica gets it to roll. She had 10 in the opening half. She's got 12. You want to see Case once again stay really physical, keep initiating the pressure, keep turning the corner and trying to get in the paint. Because even though they're hot from the outside, if they can get hot from the inside, that'll make their, their feet a little bit easier. Well, Matt Howerton, the assistant coach, talked about that as this is Mitchell with the rebound. Sarah's going to go back up with it, leave it short. That's exactly what he said, Brooke, at halftime when he talked to me. He said, he said, it's nice that we're hitting those outside shots, but he says, I really want us to, you know, be a little bit more aggressive inside. And speaking of aggressive inside, that's Brooks. Missed the shot. Mills grabbed the rebound. And once again, that's Sarah Mitchell. She's in there. She's making, you know, making an impact, making that shot difficult. Um, so you love to see that defense intensity from her. Chiraklis sets up Plaka. Emily left it long. Here comes Matouche. Right side, it's Grandison in front of her team. Inside to Brooks against Mills, and Isabella just holding the ground. Here comes Margaret Terry the other way. Boy, a lot of movement out there right now. That's Mitchell from 16 feet. A little bit rushed, a little bit frazzled. So there's that difference between pushing the pace but also, you know, having a composure. So just trying to find that balance. This is our not. They would not let her in, and a whistle. Foul on the Spartans. It's going to go against Mills for Isabella. That will be her first. Mills hit six threes in an opening half. She's got 41 on the season. And in her career, she's got 130. And that ranks her top 12 all time. And she's only played in 65 games because... Isabella and most of the young women on this team, on this floor, both teams, lost a season to COVID. Fouls on the Spartans, and it's on Plaka. You can see that, you know, those hands came down there. Good defense. She tried to force her outside, but when those hands come down, it's almost going to foul every single time. Spartans with the timeout. We're going to keep it here. Let's keep an eye on that. Spartan bench and let's talk a little bit more about Isabella Mills if I can. I mentioned that you know she comes into this season her senior season Brooke. You you played four years you had 100 games. She has really even though it's her senior year only played three years season, because yeah. of so she came into this year just 50 games into her senior year because of COVID. So she's played this is her 15th 65 she'll play 10 more. She'll have 75 at the end of this year and she'll finish in the top 10 all time in many categories, in the three-point shots made, in block shots, in steals, in minutes average per game, in three-point percentage, in free throw percentage, and in rebounds. She will finish, that's seven categories, in the top ten in seven categories all time in women's case history, and she's only played in three seasons. You know, I think props to her and props to, you know, all the players that had to kind of manage that whole <laughs> season being canceled, you know, whatever it may be for each person. But um, that's impressive. You know, she's a, a really strong player, obviously a really talented player. Um, so it, I think it's it's only right that she earns those accolades and uh, excited to see what those finals, final numbers are uh, because I think it'll be, it'll be up there. We'll see where she lands. It's been fun to watch her play. This is Terry from Mills. Margaret left it short. And here comes Wash U the other way. Grandison, the point guard, with the basketball, working against her counterpart in Margaret Terry. 7-10 left in this one, in the third quarter, rather. Spartans up two at 37-35. Arnott and Brooks working the blocks. Shot from the outside, and it's a good one. It's a three-point shot made by Sammy Matouche. Matouche has got five. And the Bears with the lead, it's 38-37. There's the 
there's seven for you, Ron. Seven, seven, three from Isabella Mills. I looked down to <laughs> was do a, a quick correction release. in my scorebook, and I heard you say there's seven, Ron. Mills with 22. That was an important answer. I think Wash is a little bit on a little bit of a run, so having that answer was huge. Are not inside. She's got 14. Game's tied at 40. Mills has tied the all-time three-point shots made in a game record at seven. So the next one breaks the record. Keep an eye here on what they do inside, because whether or not they score from the inside, Brooks and the number 15 on Wash U, they keep it, they keep your attention so they get any shot they want from the outside. They really do. Brooks has got 12 points. Arnott, you mentioned number 15, that's yep. Maya Arnott. She's got 14. And short of Naomi Jackson's nine points off the bench, it's really been Arnott and Brooks in this basketball game. Of course, you could make the same argument with Isabel Mills. Right. <laughs> Mills has got 22 of the 40. Catch and shoot, that's Plaka. Left it short. Mitchell almost chased it down. And those Here are good Matush. looks from Case. It's just a matter of can they connect because they're getting the shots they want. So just keep, you know, just keep shooting, keep taking those chances, and they'll, they'll start falling. They're going to call that foul on Mills. Mills had the position up front. Let's see. No, they're going to call it on Brooks. That's what I was going to make the argument for. I thought they should have called it on Brooks because yeah. Mills had position. Coach Reimer's happy with the call, and that's what they did. They called it on Jessica Brooks. That's her second. And once again, being physical with her is only going to, you know, make her make her job that much more difficult, kind of frustrate her a little bit. Um, so you can see that she just got taken out of the game for a quick breather and probably tried to, to, to reset and obviously watch, keep an eye on fouls as well. Mills working out top. Vanderbeck with her. Isabella lost it. Gill got it back. Vanderbeck will shoot it and make it. Lucy Vanderbeck off the bench hits a three. She's got six. Another three for the for the scorebook there. Truly so fun to watch. They've got two in the second half. How many did they have at halftime? Ten? Ten threes, was it? At halftime? Yep, ten. So 36 of their 43 are from outside the arc. I don't know that I've ever seen a game like that. That fouls on Gill. That's Preet's third. No, I'm sorry, it's on Plaka, right? Yes. Yep. That's Plaka's third, though. So pick your poison on that one. You want Gill or Plaka to have three fouls, both key players, especially in this game, inside with the physicality. So that's Macbeth with the free throw. Germantown, Maryland native. Nyla Macbeth. Are not with a rebound, Gill tied her up. And the Spartans are going to have the basketball. One thing that has not been good for Wash U is you see their bench, their free throw shooting. And coming into today, they shot 66% on the season. That's not great yeah. either. Only two for four at half. Two for four at half, and yep. they're 0 for four in the second half. Yep. So two for eight on the game. And that's something that, because of how physical they are on the inside, it's unfortunate that they can't convert those free throws because they're getting the chance. So that's something that while Case might be fouling on the inside, they're not giving up points because they aren't able to convert on the free throw. Foul out top, hand foul. Nyla Macbeth. They've definitely turned up intensity defensively, especially on Isabella Mills, trying to maybe throw her off a little bit, not let her get those easy three-pointers, trying to make her beat them a different way. You can tell they are just up in her face, giving her no space at all. Yeah, it's almost like deny her the ball, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, almost like a box in one where yeah. let anybody else score but her. She's good enough though that you can't you can't take it away. Wow. And there it is. There's the record. And the There's bench the is going crazy. That's her, so fun for her. Her eighth three-point shot. I don't know if her teammates know it. They just know that she's red smoking hot. And there's that inside presence again. She didn't convert, but once again, just occupying that space, making case think twice before they, you know, help in. Beautiful defense, boy. But it turns into a layup for Arnott, but you can't fault the defense. Arnott just stayed with it, cut to the basket when her teammate needed help. She has a great sense about her in terms of, you know, kind of play, finishing off a broken down play, for last, lack of a better word. Um, really finds those opportunities and finishes a play, even if it looks like there's nothing left. Mills out top with Macbeth in her kitchen. Isabella going to step back, shoot it, left it short. Grand heat check. <laughs> yep, heat check. She's earned that for sure. 
Spartans up three. 340 left in this third quarter. This is our knot. The lob inside to Macbeth. And the ball's going to go off Wash U. Nope, they're going to say it went off Preet Gill. I don't know how that went off Preet Gill. Jordan Rich was almost standing on top of that basketball. Nice crowd on hand on a Friday night. Class is back in session this week yep. at Case Western Reserve. My partner, a 2015 grad with a degree in nutrition. Is that what the degree was called, nutrition, or was it? did it have a more fancy name to it? Nope, just, just Bachelor's of Science in Nutrition, and then went on to get my master's in it as well here at Case. So lots of love for the, the Case Western Reserve here. I see the president of Case Western Reserve sitting directly across from you and me. Oh my gosh. get a shot of him. Yep, shout out to him for sure. Sabrina Del Bello hit that three. That's her first bucket of the game. Game's tied at 46. Three minutes left in this third quarter. You can hear that from here. Some sort of slap, unintentional of course, but you could definitely hear that contact from here. And there it is again. Reaching yes. once again, trying to get Isabella Mills off her game. Uh, that's a foul that they'll, they'll gladly take. Well, a forearm to the chin every now and then, you know. <laughs> that'll get you off your game It'll a little bit. It'll get you off your game, absolutely. I've had my fair share of those for sure. It's a very physical conference, the University Athletic Association has been. Mills step back three. Can she get nine? She does. Keep shooting. She's on fire. Yep, and there it is, the official word from the Sports Information Director. Team <laughs> record of three-pointers since 2001-2002 season. Um, 15 versus Olivet and 14 versus Carnegie Mellon. So that's a team record. Team so that's record, what we're going yes. for next. Team record, yep. What The Spartans have 14 right now? Yes. 10 at half, four yep. in the second half, three, yep. <laughs> three so by So they're minutes. tied with the, yeah, the record from... 2017 with Carnegie Mellon game. Mitchell, boy, that was a, a nice in, un, unintended screen, I think, yes. for Preet Gill. <laughs> You'll love a little unintended screen every now and then. There's our not again. Take. You know what, she's got the length in her stride. That first step creates space. It's very difficult to defend, and you can see she's just strong too. So that first step is not only long, but strong, and right at the middle of the defender's chest, making it really difficult for Kayla to, to defend that one. This is Mitchell. Shot clock's at 15, game clock at a minute 30. Third quarter, Spartans up three with a double screen for Sarah Mitchell. To the basket, looked for the foul, did not get it. This is Chiraklis hanging around. And Kayla Chiraklis has six. And that's the boards that Coach Reimer was talking about at halftime. She mentioned to me as she was passing by, we got to get him off the boards. And that's what she loves to see, staying after it, getting that offensive rebound. Macbeth out top. It's Del Bello. And you can see that Case went to a zone there. They were in a 2-3 zone, challenging, daring Wash U to shoot those outside shots for, and taking away that middle. So it's definitely a switch in their defense mindset um, to really take away that middle and force them to make shots from the outside. When you're on offense, let's put Brooke Orcutt or Brooke Beecher on offense for a second, and, and you come down the floor and, and the team was in man and suddenly they're in zone, you know, on the fly like that. Does that mess you up at least for that possession? Absolutely. It's definitely an adjustment. You have to kind of adjust, you know, how you attack and, and it does it just throws you off your game for a second. So keeping that um, wash you on their toes and change the defense, it's it's awesome. Mills staying on her toes and staying with that play. Here's yep. a good look at it. Great block there by Isabella Mills. That was Brooks trying to get the bucket on the break. There was a great shot of Isabella, and she's doing it both on on both ends of the floor, which is, you know, you can't ask for anything more. Mills came into the night. And she fights for that rebound. Ball's tied up. Possession arrow's going to stay with the Bears. She came into the night with 54 blocks. And that was 11th all-time in the history of the women's program. She's added a few more tonight in three seasons. Truly incredible, those numbers that she's put up. Brooks with a strong drive, and Mills grabs the miss. Isabella eyes up, down the floor. This is Chiraklis, left hand, missed it. Are not with a rebound. 
Eight seconds to shoot, end of the third quarter here. Spot up three, dribble set up, shot is short. Preet Gill fights for the rebound, and that's going to wrap up the quarter. We're going to head to the fourth. It got crazy at the end as it I'm over here did. sweating. Spartans up five. We'll be back. <laughs> Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. And there he is, saying hi to everybody. The president of Case Western Reserve University, President Kaler, wearing his Spartan blue. He joined me on the broadcast last year in the Sweet 16. Oh, you and awesome. your husband, Billy, were in the gym. Yep, we were here. What it an was... atmosphere that was, right? Oh, my gosh. You can't even put it into words. It was so fun to see, you know, Horsburg packed to the brim. This place was shaking. It was a great game. Yeah. You were telling me. You were texting all your former teammates, right? Oh, yeah. Right? We were all still thinking we could play just as well as they could, so we were all giving our input, and it was fun to just have kind of the whole crew, um, you know, watching again back like we were, you know, in college ourselves. Well, the men's team plays next. We have a big matchup. It's a, big it's a tough one. A big, yeah. a big game for them. Wash U men come in 12 and two. Spartan men come in 11 and two. Wash U's three and zero oh in association play, and the Spartans trying to get back on the positive end. They're one and two after a rough road trip to Rochester and Emory. We've got 10 minutes of basketball left in a game that the Spartans have played outstanding in. And the young woman with the basketball right now, Mills, has been top shelf of everyone. And notice who's guarding her. That is not an Brooks. accident. They have yeah. one of their best defenders on her trying to shut her down. Props to Isabella for going right at her, drawing the foul. But that's going to be a, a tough matchup to finish up this quarter here. There's Randy Henderson just asked for a switch on 21. And 21, of course, is Isabella Mills. They're trying to keep her on her toes, keep her guessing in terms of who's going to be guarding her for Brooks that exact with, purpose. You, you called it active hands, and there's a good good example of active hands for Brooks. In the corner with a defender in her face, long rebound to Isabella Mills. It's a good look by Matouche. Ball just didn't drop. This is Mills with a new defender on her. It's Grandison, the point guard. Terry off a double screen right into Brooks. They're going to call Jessica for the block. You're shaking your head, Brooke. I want to thank everybody that all season long brings us the great pictures, Jeff and Paul on the video, the replay by Brian, and, of course, our director, Mike Becker. I can attest, Ron, that to this day, some of the best, you know, streaming that my family has seen and that, you know, family and friends have watched over the years of my, me playing and currently one of the best broadcasts out there. So props to all them. Huge thanks to them. They do a great job bringing us the pictures and the replays and the essence of the basketball game. That's Terry with the hoop inside. She's got five. Lead is now at seven, 55-48. Inside nine minutes to play. This is our not working against Gill. Preet did a nice job, and Great they're going to call her for a foul. That was a late whistle. Late whistle. She stayed down, too. That's a tough That's a tough foul. But once again, that's a result of our not, you know, physicality and going at her. So it's making her look like it's a foul, whether it is or not, a different story. But that's definitely um, because of the intensity that our not's playing with. That's three on Gill. Plaka has three as well. This is the deep pass to Grandison, the point guard. Vanderbeck will give her some room. Inside nine minutes to play. This is Gill again. They go right at Preet. The freshman, Macbeth, is going to shoot free throws. First year player after first year player. Macbeth went right at Plaka, and Emily's going to get called for the foul. It's foul number four on Plaka. You know, Emily's got only three points. She just double digits for the Spartan team, but her defense 
has been very important, hasn't it? Yep, and sometimes, you know, defense doesn't always, doesn't always show up on the stat sheet, which I think is something my dad always told me when I was playing. And so while it's frustrating that you don't, maybe you don't get the credit, she, it's, it's, in, it's invaluable what she brings to the team defensively. So with 8.38, she's going to head to the bench. And Vanderbeck is back in. Lucy will sub in for Plotka. So Macbeth, 0 for 3 from the foul line so far tonight. Loftus is 0 for 4. You said it earlier, Ron, they, are, they struggle at the free throw line. So once again, you never like to foul, but for this team specifically, giving up a foul, maybe not always a death sentence. It tends to be right. for others. Terry drew the defense, saw Vanderbeck wide open, and Lucy left it short. Boy, that was a good look. Comes Grandison with it. And look at the pressure by those, by those two guards. Like, that is something you can't always coach, is it? Six cents to you know pressure the ball maybe when they weren't even supposed to. Well, great ball movement. Boy, the ball movement turned into an easy bucket for Loftus. Brenna Loftus with her first basket. That was a much needed basket for Wash U. Vanderbeck will shoot it again off a screen. Lucy Vanderbeck. Beautiful shot. Took the opportunity, and you'll notice now they're dropping back to that zone, trying to keep things, keep Wash U on their toes. And you can see that Washi gets a little bit flustered when they go back to that zone kind of unexpectedly. How much confidence for Vanderbeck to shoot that shot. Boy, the double team turned into an easy look for Washi. That's how you beat the zone right there. <laughs> Loftus again. They're trying to shut down our knot. And in the meantime, Preet Gill scores on the other end. Once again, that's, that openness for the inside is because of how well they're shooting outside. They were so worried about Lucy and their outside shooting, they lost track of Preet for making it for an easy two. Coach Henderson wants a timeout for Wash U. We'll take one, two. Spartans and Preet Hill up eight, 725 left to play in this basketball game. It's a full timeout, Mike, just to let you know. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Intercontinental Suites has been transformed into much more than a hotel. It is a center of wellness and tranquility, featuring renovated suites, an expanded fitness center, and pure rooms for guests requiring the most allergen-resistant rooms on the market. C2, our Mediterranean-style restaurant and bar, accentuates the ambiance of relaxation and rejuvenation. Chef Omar Jones has designed a menu full of fresh, locally grown herbs and vegetables, along with a flavorful cuisine inspired by the beneficial Mediterranean diet. Call the Intercontinental today at 216-707-4. Or visit us at hotelsclevelandclinic.com or on Facebook. There are the numbers. Seven and a half left. Spartans up eight. Wash you with the basketball. This is Grandison out top to Brooks with Mills on her. The matchup between Brooks and Mills has been fun to watch. And this young lady right here, Arnott, has been outstanding. Good defense. Isabella Mills stepped in front of Brooks on the pass inside and stole the basketball. Talk about it, Red. Talk about it. Mitchell taking her time. Terry into Gill. Preet against Arnott. Kicked it out. And there was nobody open. Ball went off. Isabella Brooks was. Right on her. Brooks could have been wearing Isabella's jersey. I mean, <laughs> they were that close. <laughs> they are, I don't want to say getting desperate, but they are, once again, turning up the intensity on which they guard her, taking, letting anybody else score but her. And she's not making it easy on them, that's for sure. Are not to Loftus Grandison. Again, patience by the Bears. You can see Brooks Kayla with Mills. inside. Yeah, see Kayla inside fighting or not, fighting her physicality with us, trying to keep her on her toes. Loftus, soft shot, didn't go, and Mills grabs that rebound. Boy, she scored points, she's blocked shots, she's grabbed rebounds. 
the senior Isabella Mills with Grandison really putting the heat on her. All over her. Chiraklis with a strong move. Here's Mitchell. Kayla again into a double team. Sarah with the open look said, going to take some more time off that shot clock. Inside six minutes to play. Spartans up eight. Got to shoot this one, though. Terry's going to shoot two free throws. Margaret, that's a smart play, right? Smart play. You know, shot clock's winding down. That's what you want to look for is a nice drive to the hoop, drawing the foul. Want her to stay off the ground, though. Second time on the ground. You want to take care of her. It's a long, long well, conference she, she's season. She's landed got. on both hips tonight. Yes, that one on the right, the other one earlier, hard on the left. Coach Reimer wants a timeout. She's going to give Margaret Terry a little time to breathe before she shoots free throws. She almost landed on the tailbone she that time. Did, Why not, yeah. you know, all the way around the hip area? Yep, yep. I know your nutrition, but, can, you know, can you, you recommend a good uh, <laughs> hip Lots of therapeutic ice. <laughs> person? Lots of ice? Fortunately, we have a now, great how many years of medical here. school do you have to have to give me that answer right there? Lots of ice. Uh, none, actually, Ron. It's <laughs> <laughs> many years of athletics give, can give you that answer, but they got a good training staff over there. They'll take care of her afterwards and get her ready for Sunday. Here's a look at some of the teams in the University Athletic Association. Brooke, for you, what was it like playing in a in a league that's just, you know, not only talent-wise, but look at the places you go. Boston, New York, yeah. Pittsburgh, Atlanta, St. Louis, Chicago. Well, it's a really demanding travel and conference schedule. It's one of the best. Like, there's no other, you know, conference that gets to travel like we do. And, you know, playing two games in a weekend, once again, a heavy, a heavy ask. But... I wouldn't have it any other way. That was, it's just a really fun conference, always competitive, um, and you get to see some really cool sights along the way. I know that you've started your own business here in Cleveland. Yep. Uh, Nutrition with Brooke. Yep. But when you were a player traveling to those cities, did you ever, you know, do some interviews with some companies? or I mean, did you take advantage of, of anything I, like that? I personally didn't have any um, opportunities to do that or need to do that, but I know a lot of my teammates did. Yeah. Some of the men's players did where they would, you know, either – go to a meeting in that actual city or actually fly in late or fly out early to go to a certain interview. So it definitely, um, once again, a demanding travel schedule, but definitely allowed for some of those interviews and opportunities to happen that maybe wouldn't have otherwise. So look at that Spartan bench, Preet Gill and Emily Plotka and Evie Miller. This is Margaret Terry, missed the first. Need to make these free throws down the stretch. Terry's got six. Terry's done a great job facilitating the floor. I think she's kind of demanded the floor. She's been physical. Um, six points, six valuable points, but also the points she's made happen. That's that's where, you know, a lot of her value comes in as well. You said demanded the floor. I couldn't agree with you more. She has done a great job of just, you know, kind of just announcing her presence with authority to mm -hmm. steal a line from the movie Bull Durham. I know that's a baseball movie, but... <laughs> Still applies, still applies. Still applies here. Speaking there of, you go. Margaret Terry. <laughs> right on script, right? Vanderbeck, she's hit a couple of good threes in the second half. Big time threes for sure in terms of they need a little pickup and she provided it. Screen and roll, Chiraklis at the end. How about that? Great take. I thought that was a pass at first. Wait, beautiful finish. That's beautiful make... pass by Mitchell. Chiraklis with the reverse. It's going to make Coach Matt very happy. He loves seeing that those inside players finish Are not right there. inside. Boy, my are not. And you can see that it looked like while she's trying to pick up a little bit more full court, upping the pressure, upping the intensity, trying to get some turnovers because they are, time is winding down here. 442. Time's not going fast enough if you're <laughs> somebody wearing gray and blue tonight. This is Vanderbeck. She'll step back, shoot the three. Can she get it? That's an air ball. But look who's there. Mitchell inside, double teamed. It's Chiraklis with it. Shot clock's at 16. Shot clock did not reset. But it was an air ball, so it shouldn't have reset. I think the shot clock went back to 20, and it should not have reset. Right. Coach Henderson's calling for a shot clock violation. So we'll, they're going to determine where the where the time was when that shot went up because it didn't draw iron, so it should not have reset to 20. So while they took a look, take a look at that, and Coach Reimer talks to her team, we'll take a timeout. We'll be back.
Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our special spectacular accommodations. Watch the slip. Watch After the slip. taking a look at the, the clock, there will be four seconds. The Spartans will have four seconds to catch it and shoot it. Mills inside to Mitchell off the glass, wouldn't go, didn't draw iron, so the shot clock and the rebound will go in WashU's favor. Here come the Bears quickly on offense. This is Del Bello. Sabrina hit a big three in that opening half. She shot it at the foul line, it was blocked. Here comes Terry with it. Margaret surveying the floor and is going to bring it back out. You saw Coach Reimer there saying, pull it out, slow it down, get a good shot. They have a decent lead right now, so it's about you know game maintenance, clock maintenance, and finishing this thing out strong. Spartans up nine. Inside four minutes to play. This is Chiraklis with a spin on the block off the glass. They'll say she player control foul on Kayla Chiraklis. I like the physicality of Kayla. I think she may have played, or is playing, I should say, her most physical game so far. And we talked about that in the first half in terms of we, that was a big ask from Coach Reimer, something she's always looking for. And she's answered the call. So it's really exciting to see her being physical um, and not just responding to it, but initiating it as well. Spartans looking for some defense. Mitchell guarding the three. Vanderbeck with the rebound. Here comes Lucy the other way. Coach Reimer holding up both hands. You know, she may be small, but she's mighty. You cannot miss the presence of her in the gym, that's for sure. Former point guard, no still a point no guard foul. as a coach. This is Vanderbeck with the basketball. Lucy with a high screen from Mills. Lucy, beautiful pass. Great look. Recognized the defense. That was a great take. Unfortunately, the finish wasn't there, but a really great pass there by, by Lucy. Boy, you want that bucket, though. Brooks inside, thankfully. The Bears aren't making any baskets themselves no, right now. No, and that's a lucky one because she was wide open. I think she was surprised by how wide open she was. Grandison is back in. Del Bello will take a seat. Carissa Grandison is in with no points, but I can tell you this, she's their point guard, and she has really done a great job tonight of just, you know, taking care of the basketball. This is Brooks. Jessica doubled down with Mills. Grandison ball movement. Finds Loftus, left it short, long rebound, and Mitchell out. will chase it down. Those box outs, when they're far away from the basket, are sometimes overlooked. That was a huge box out, a huge ball grab there by, by Sarah Mitchell. Vanderbeck trying to keep a hold of that basketball. They're not making it easy on him, that's for sure. Mills, step back, shot, got it! How about Isabel Mills? On a step back, you too. You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> you could not write a better game for her right now. She's feeling it, and she is letting her presence be known. <laughs> Coach Reimer's feeling it, too. She is down in her crouch position, just clapping those hands together. You love to see it. She's got 31 points. And all of them... <laughs> All right, Matouche hit a three. She's got eight. I know there's plenty of time left. There's, you know, minute 45. Spartans are up nine, so they need to take care of business. But back to Mills for a second. 31 points, and all of them but one have come from outside the arc. There's a free throw in there. That's it, and otherwise she is lights out up there. Now, Brooke. You've been playing basketball, been around basketball. As you see this incredible step back shot for her 10th three for your whole life. You're 29 years old. Since the time you were five or six, you've been playing basketball. You've been around some really good players. You were a very good player yourself. You played with some great players. Have you ever seen a performance like this tonight? No, this is she's, she's playing on a whole different level. You can just tell her confidence is through the roof. She is stepping up. She, she's once again just trying to lead her team here to a victory, and it is... It's really incredible to see the way that she's playing right now. It's been a pleasure to watch. 
<laughs> I mean, I know in Cleveland there's that phrase, we are all witness to, you know, certain number 23. Yes, yes. But tonight we are all witness to number 21 and her three-point shooting prowess. It has been a pleasure to watch Isabella Mills play basketball. This is Mitchell. Sarah Mitchell, think anybody at Lone Tree, Colorado watching tonight? I think a couple there. Hello, Colorado family. Now, you were telling me Sarah's assistant high school coach yep. was your high school yes, coach. Yes, Coach Nemechek um, was my high school head coach at Dakota Ridge, and then she went over to Highlands Ranch where Sarah played her high school ball at and was the assistant there. So um, it's been fun to kind of have that Colorado connection for sure. Mitchell's got five. She has been outstanding defensively. And right there is a latest example. Did a great job of Brooks on that baseline. And Margaret Terry's going to walk the floor and shoot free throws. I said it, I think, you know, three or four times tonight, but Sarah Mitchell's defense is just, it's getting me fired up. Like, I, I am just so inspired by her defensive play. And it's, once again, it's not going to show up on a stat sheet, but she is just making it so difficult for, for the Washu offense to run the way it wants to. And it's exactly, Brooke, what Coach Reimer wanted tonight, isn't it? Absolutely. You and I both talked to Jen, and she said to both of us, we need to be physical if yep. we're going to have a chance at this basketball game. And it starts defensively, right? You want to yeah. make your presence known on defense, and I think that's exactly what Sarah's doing. So the entire team really as a whole, but Sarah Mitchell especially, really standing out as a defensive powerhouse. So there's a timeout on the floor. We'll take one, two. Spartans up 10 with a minute 11 left. Have you heard the news? The Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high quality accommodations and exceptional service standards. Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. So coming into tonight, Isabella Mills in her career had 124 three-point shots made in 64 games. She was 12th all-time. Mary Herendine, who you know, was 11th with 125. So coming in, Isabella needed only one. two, one to tie, two to pass Mary. Well, she's done a little bit a more little tonight. A little bit more, yes. I, climbing up the leaderboard. I wonder how far she's climbed up because I never for a second would think that she'd, you know, make seven, eight, nine three-point shots. So I didn't check that far high up the list. I wonder if she's cracked the top ten. We'll have to get Eddie or John on that. And, you know, I'm sure we're going to have Isabella here in post game, post -game so maybe yeah. we can figure that out. This is Mills in the backcourt. Full court pressure there by Washu. They have no other option. Ooh. Bailed out maybe a little bit there. Yeah. Once again, you'll take it, absolutely take it. That's what you have, you know, take care of the ball. But that was really strong defense by the Washu Bears. I'm almost sad that Isabella's going to shoot free throws. Because. Ruined the streak. <laughs> yeah, I mean, 30 she of the will not 31 from the, from the three point line. It's been so fun to watch her play. She reminds me so much of you know some of the players that I played with, the Jess McCoys of the world, who kind of yeah. do it all in terms of has a beautiful shot, hit from outside, but has such a presence on defense as well, uh, pushes the ball up the floor. She has kind of a little bit of all, you know, a little bit of Aaron Hollinger in her in terms of how she can finish around the basket when she gets in there. So it's been really fun to watch her play over the years. Jen's going to take her out. Or there's a timeout. I wonder if when they come back on the floor, because it's been such a special night, and, you know, Coach Reimer is probably too superstitious to do this because there's still 51 seconds left. You know where right. I'm going, right? Maybe. If if she's going to if she's gonna sub out for Isabella and let her come out to the Received, ovation absolutely. of the crowd to receive a, Or let her know, finish the game out. A, or, yeah, or finish it out. Let's see what happens. I bet you Coach Reimer said, she'd she look at me and she says, Ron, I'm not taking Mills out of the game. <laughs> what are you get, crazy? What are you nuts? <laughs> we got to finish this thing. Look at her. She, Coach Reimer still got game face on. And don't you doubt that Isabel doesn't want to come out of the game either. No. So she does, She could probably care less about the accolades. But she wants to finish this game out with her teammates and, and get this win for the, the Spartans. So there's 51.5 left. Spartans up 10. Grandison will inbound it for Wash U. 
Brooks and Matouche. This is Matouche, catch, shoot. She's going to miss it long, and Mills is going to grab the rebound. And the possession arrow is going to keep it with the Bears. You know, I can't wait to see the final box score because the rebounds that Mills has had, the couple of blocks. It's probably brought kind of swayed things back into at least balance, if not in favor of the Spartans, because they were down. Gosh, what were they down here? Seven rebounds um, at down half at halftime, yeah. yeah. Brooks with a ball fake, creating her own shot. Eight point game. Mills in the backcourt. Isabel is going to dribble it up with a double team. And did somebody whistle? Yeah, they blew a whistle. There's so much noise in this gym, which is fun, that I didn't even hear the whistle. Yeah. That's her fifth, it looks like. So Grandison will foul out with three points. And the senior from Cincinnati, Sycamore High School. They're the men. They play next. Cole Frilling and Ian Elam and Luke Thorburn, Mitch Prendergast. They are anxious to play basketball. I can tell you that right now. Hoping to probably get a similar result here of their female counterpart. Counterparts should be a great game for the men. It's got to be fun for them. I know they didn't get to see a lot of it, but they got to see a little bit of it. We're going to keep it right here during this timeout. And, and you had many of the guys on the, the men's team that you know, obviously you guys were friends with, the women in the men's team, because you spent so much time together. Yeah. It would be, I think, fun for the guys oh, to sit so here fun. and watch Mills do something like she's, like Absolutely. she's doing tonight. Absolutely. It probably gets them a little bit fired up, but also, you know, in the reverse, it was always fun for us to watch the men have, you know, an incredible game or an incredible win and, you know, see some of our best friends during our college years doing so well. So definitely, definitely contagious energy for sure. 71-61. Brooke, this is a team that Coach Reimer and the Spartans and Isabella Mills are beating tonight by 10 that has already, in three association games, knocked off the number one yes. team in the country and the number 10 team in yes. the country. They beat Chicago, number 10. They beat NYU, number one, last weekend. Casey's bringing it to them. And the Spartans are just knocking them down. It doesn't surprise me at all, though. Like, they are such, like, a, uh, they never stop going after it and that's something that they don't care you know what the scorebook says they should do or what the preview says they're going to play um, to, the, to the best of their ability and you know something that I had the chance to watch some of their practices um, before you know they got into conference play and I will tell you that the fact that they were picked preseason to finish last in the UAA has lit a fire under their butt from yeah. the get-go and they're playing like that they they don't believe they believe they're much better than that and they're playing like they're much oh, better yeah. than that right now absolutely they're 25 seconds away from their second win in UAA play, and their, it would be their 11th win overall on the season. And Brooke, you know this well. If you look over the seasons in the history of women's basketball, there's the one team that won 20 that made the NCAA yep. tournament. But after that, you played on the next two yep. most successful seasons in women in history, the 16 and nine season your sophomore year, and the 15 and 10 season your freshman year. Yep. First two years, it's it's definitely they're on track to have a really incredible season, and don't count them out at all because they if they play like this, they uh, they have a lot of opportunity waiting for them. And I love that they haven't lost their composure yet, even with the pressure right now. Like they are taking their time, letting the ball you know kind of hit the ground, set up their their press break, and and taking a breath. Really good to see, even though the game is winding down here in the final seconds. 30-second timeout. Let's take one more. Director Mike Becker, one more on the night. We'll be back. So Have you I've heard the Mills. news that Intercontinental Cleveland has earned its 10th consecutive Four Diamond Award from AAA in recognition of its high-quality accommodations and exceptional service standards? Planning an important event like a corporate meeting, annual conference, fundraising gala, holiday party, or highly personalized wedding? Choose excellence in the Intercontinental Cleveland. Our planning professionals will take time to consider every detail and lead you through an experience which is proudly world-class. Call us today at 216-707-4100 for more details or to request a tour of our spectacular accommodations. Hey, watch the long ball. Try to do math, which I was never good at, Brooke. My on worst the spot, subject on in the spot, school. <laughs> My dad would be crying right now. He's a math teacher. He's a math trade. teacher? Oh, yeah, well, he's probably like, Brooke, do math better. 
I am still a uh, an understudy when it comes to math. <laughs> I do know this. The numbers say this, 13.9 seconds left. Spartans up nine at 72-63. This is Brooks straight into a triple team. You're going to call a foul on either Mills or Terry. Fouls on Isabella. Fouls on Isabella Mills, her second. Two fouls. All the activity that she has had tonight, just two fouls. And even though maybe the, the scoreboard says the game is over, that's something that's gonna they're gonna want to work on in terms of you know fouling, even in these final seconds, being smart about their fouls and still talking and finishing out a game strong because there's gonna be other games that aren't they're gonna be much closer where those those little you know um, plays matter. Chiraklis chased that down. Coach Reimer calling a timeout. Maybe she's gonna. Maybe she's going to say exactly that. I mean, one of the things, because it's interesting, because I, I was in the mindset of this game's over, let's let's wind it down. But you were still analyzing it, even to that last defensive play where Mills fouled mm -hmm. Brooks on the drive. You were still looking at that like, you know, we've got to be smarter with our fouls. I know the game's over. And um, that was an interesting perspective. And I wonder if that's one of the things that Coach Reimers, I mean, why else do you call a timeout with 8.8 right. 8 seconds left and you're up eight? It's a great opportunity to practice something. They don't, you know, it's hard to sometimes mimic this sort of situation in practice or something. So taking advantage of this time and, you know, how to run a play in the last 8.8 .8 seconds. And, you know, because there's going to, there might be a time where this could be the winner, you know, the, the game winning play. So just good practice. Um, I think it's just the coaching mindset in me in terms of everything's always a coaching opportunity, a chance to teach something so that doesn't happen again or they do it better when the next time comes around. Here comes Wash U. Bears, of course, will make the trip to Pittsburgh next to take on Carnegie Mellon on Sunday. And the University of Chicago comes here on Sunday and Brooke and I will be back for that Sunday afternoon game. Mills just kept it. The bench was saying don't foul. And Isabella just said, well, I'm going to keep this till somebody hacks me. <laughs> Maybe it was hard to hear. Maybe they thought they were yelling foul, you know. Missed the do not foul part of it, but that's all right. Two more free throws here coming for Isabella Mills. 21 has done two things tonight. Well, she's done more than two, but from the scoring perspective, she has made five of those, and she's made ten three-point shots. You can hear the bench, you can see the bench. They are excited for her, they are pumped, and they are so excited to have won this game. And look at them, Mosh pitting Isabella Mills. So much fun. Congratulations to Isabella Mills, who set a program and conference record with her 10-day three-pointers. Conference record. University Athletic Association record. Ten three-pointers three -pointers in one game. Amazing. Look at them. They're still celebrating. That's what you love to see, right? Like, it's, the team is so excited for her. Once again, she could probably care less about records and breaking them, but what a game. What a game for the Spartans and for Isabella Mills, for sure. We're going to try to hopefully grab her. Um, John Schwartz will get her and bring her over. her and bring her over here. Yeah. She needs to come talk to us. <laughs> yes, she does. I, you know, oh, here she here is. Here she comes. Was it 35? How many finals? Don't give her yet. The baby's don't give her yet. <laughs> Isabella, come in here. Okay. So, you know, I don't know if you've got anybody back home or if they're all here. Yeah. Um, yeah, I have my mom, my brother, my grandparents back, back home. home. Yeah, my dad and grandpa are here, though. Yeah. You want to say hi to anybody right now? They can see you. You're, uh, you know. Hi, Mom. Hi, bro hi Cameron. <laughs> hi, Grandma. <laughs> 36 points. Yeah. 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 Crazy. <laughs> right? I'm surprised too. <laughs> you hit 10 three-pointers. Yeah. Not only is it a, in the history of women's basketball, a Case Western Reserve record yeah. for one game. Yeah. It's also a record for the University Athletic Association for one game. Wow. Which is pretty cool. Yeah. Pretty yeah. special. <laughs> it you. was, I've been doing, 
Spartan women and men's basketball for 18 years. Yeah. This is my 18th season. And we've seen some really good individual performances. Yeah. But I don't know if I've ever seen a shooting <laughs> night like you just put on tonight. Uh, thank you. Tell thank me you. about it, Isabella. Um, I don't know. I, I have Last weekend I was off shooting. I had an off game, and I came in, shot on the gun. Our coach was like, get in, get in. So I got in. This morning, my boyfriend Ian's on the men's team. He came in and rebound for me. We actually did a shooting contest. And we. I, I guess that's I need to do that every game, <laughs> every day game, game day. Ian Elam is your boyfriend. Yeah, yeah. And did you beat him in the shooting contest? Yeah, I beat him in horse. <laughs> and where was he? Where were you letter-wise when he got E? Did you just uh, have an H? H, -O, H -O. You had H-O, yeah. so you dominated him in horse. And then you took it to the Bears of Washington University yeah. Yeah. tonight. Now, Isabella, that's no small feat that you just hit. I mean, that team knocked off the number one team in the country yeah. last weekend. Yeah. The weekend before that, they knocked off the number 10 team in the country. Yeah. They come in the only team in the UAA, 3-0. and And you guys beat them. You handle them. You hit. You score 36 points. You did anything you wanted to do with that basketball tonight, including the ninth three-pointer, which was a step-back three from the right wing, where you went into defense. And I think it was Brooks and maybe yeah. Grandison on you. Yeah. So are you thinking about anything out there, or is it just happening? Tell me. Put us in your um, head. I don't know. First half, I was just feeling it. And then second half, they were kind of face-guarding me. And I was just like, I'm going to let my teammates do what they can do. And if I get an open shot, I'll make like I'll shoot it and I'll hopefully make it. Yeah, like they I didn't really want you to have the basketball yeah. in that second half <laughs> yeah, because yeah. you had you had 19 at halftime that included six threes and then one free throw. Yeah. So you finished with 36. So even though they were face guarding yeah. you, you had you almost doubled up. You yeah. had 17 in the second half. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Somebody's fanning you <laughs> off right now. I don't know if you can yeah. see this, but we've got people fanning her <laughs> off because she is, you know, oh my God. yeah. Well, I want you to go celebrate with your team. Thank you so because much. Because they love you, and they can't wait to see you. I love so them. Yeah. Great job tonight. Thank you so much. Isabella you so Mills, much. 36 points. Thank you. We haven't seen anything like that in a very long time. Have a great night. We'll see you Sunday.